Hello and welcome to Pulse Check with Archer Nursing, where nursing comes to life. In this podcast, you give us 15 minutes of your day and we'll take one complicated nursing topic and make it easy. Ready for nursing to be fun? I'm Morgan and today we're diving into SIADH, Syndrome of Inappropriate Antidiuretic Hormone Secretion. Let's jump right into our practice question. Remember, we're coming back to this at the end of the episode, so hang on to your correct answer. The nurse is caring for a client with SIADH who has a serum sodium level of 122. Which of the following is the priority nursing action? Is it A, to administer a loop diuretic as prescribed? B, monitor intake and output every shift? C, restrict oral fluids to one liter per day? Or D, implement seizure precautions? All right, so what in the world is this SIADH? Remember, it stands for Syndrome of Inappropriate Antidiuretic Hormone Secretion. That is a lot of letters. My memory trick for you is this disease has too many letters and it causes your body to have too much water. Too many letters, too much water. So what happens here? Well, the body is making too much antidiuretic hormone. Remember, that's ADH back from our last episode on DI, and it is the no pee hormone. It tells your body, hey, I am against diuresis. Do not diurese, no peeing. Hold on to water. So if our body is inappropriately secreting too much antidiuretic hormone, then we're in overdrive and retaining every ounce of water. But our body doesn't need it. Now, this does get a little tricky because only water is retained here, not sodium. So instead of becoming overloaded and swollen like we might see in heart failure, SIADH clients stay euvolemic. That means they have a normal water balance. So no peripheral edema, but their blood is just super diluted. That means low sodium levels, hyponatremia. And we know if sodium drops too low, we don't have a lot of sodium in the blood, we are going to have fluid start shifting into the brain cells to try and balance out that sodium in and out of cells. With that intracellular shift, the brain cells get bigger, they swell, we call that cerebral edema, and swollen brain cells can lead to seizures, coma, and even brain herniation if that brain gets too swollen. So low sodium, big neuro problems here in SIADH. Now, how do you recognize it? I've got three main red flags for you. The first is the most important. It is neuro symptoms. Early on, you might see irritability, headache, nausea, a little confusion. Once we go below 125 on our sodium, things are going to get dangerous fast. Hallucinations, seizures, decreased level of consciousness. Remember, if the brain gets too swollen, it can herniate. So these early signs are really a big deal. Second red flag, we're going to have low urine output. And the urine that is put out is super, super concentrated. So remember, we are producing a ton of this antidiuretic hormone. And that says, hey, don't pee, don't pee, don't pee. The kidneys are not getting the signal to release fluid, so urine output drops dramatically. And whatever does come out is super concentrated. Think like maple syrup instead of lemonade. Third key finding are labs. So we know that urine is really concentrated. That means a high urine-specific gravity greater than that 1.030, super packed with particles, high urine specific gravity. But on the flip side, we're going to see really low serum levels, low sodium, low serum osmolality. Remember, there is not a lot of stuff left in the blood because we're just holding on to water and diluting out everything in there. So in your labs, you've got this paradox of the serum values are low, the urine values are high. The blood is diluted. The urine is concentrated. So in our last episode where we went through DI, I had a post-op client that experienced DI as a complication. 
My most vivid memory of a client with SIADH is actually a teenager in the PICU who had had a really bad head injury. She was riding around on one of those motorized scooter things and hit a curb, went over the handlebars, woo, hit her head so, so, so hard. So she had a concussion, a little bit of a bleed. She had had surgery to fix that. So she was not actively bleeding. She was recovering, but we knew she had hit her head really hard. And by the time I had her, I was on day shift at this time. And I want to say she was like two days post injury that she had been with us. So things were stabilized. She was honestly probably going to leave the PICU pretty soon because her blood pressure was fine. She wasn't on any drips. She really was doing pretty well after that brain bleed was clipped. But on my shift, she started to seem a little bit off. Like she was just forgetting conversations that we had just had. Like I wanted to know what she wanted me to order her for lunch and she had forgotten that. She knew where she was. She knew her name. So it wasn't like this boom, immediate severe confusion. She just didn't totally seem herself. So I came on at 7 a.m. for day shift. We had 8 a.m. labs, and they honestly were not horrible. The sodium was a little low. It was like 131. The urine osmolality was a little bit high. The urine was still a little bit concentrated, but it wasn't anything that like set me into a tailspin, okay? As the day goes on, though, she starts just getting a little more confused, I noticed she's becoming a lot more irritable, which let's be honest, teenagers get irritable all the time, but this wasn't like her personality. Then she told me she had a severe headache. She hit the call well. She was like, I've never had a headache like this. My head is killing me. So we rechecked labs, even though they weren't ordered. And this time I was concerned that sodium had dropped down to 123. That is a critical low. The lab called me to tell me that. Again, that urine osmolality, urine specific gravity was really, really high. So she had been putting out some urine, but definitely not enough. That urine was still really concentrated. And clearly she was still hanging on to way too much fluid, diluting out that sodium. So as soon as I get this sodium result called from the lab, my first thought is, oh my gosh, she's going to have a seizure. Her brain is going to swell. I've got to get her on seizure precautions right away because we know if we've got that low sodium, we are going to have fluid shifting into the brain cells causing that cerebral edema. At this point, she's becoming pretty lethargic. So We implement seizure precautions. I'm calling the healthcare provider. We let them know. We immediately start restricting fluids. And because we have a critically low sodium, I get an order to start hypertonic saline. So this is our 3% normal saline. It's packed with a lot of sodium to try and replace so that we don't have such dilute blood with such a low sodium level. And we won't have that shifting of fluid into the brain cells causing cerebral edema. So at this point, I'm monitoring sodium every hour, input and output every single hour. By restricting fluids and giving that hypertonic saline back, the sodium starts to creep back up. We honestly want it to go pretty slow. We don't want a dramatic shift because, again, that can cause a fluid shift and lead to cerebral edema. All in all, it was all throughout the day and then the night shift after me until we got that sodium level back to normal. When I came back on shift the next morning, I didn't have this client again, but I went back to check on her just to see how she was doing. And her sodium was back up to, I think it was 134. So almost in that normal range. And her mental status was dramatically improved. She knew where she was, who she was. She was with it. She wasn't irritable. Her headache was gone. So again, this is one of the complications of a head injury that can come on really fast, be really dangerous, and we have to act quickly. So let's talk through those treatments that we did. We got to balance the fluid. We got to balance the sodium. Number one, get them on seizure precautions. Low sodium, I'm worried about seizures. Number two, restrict those fluids. The body's retaining too much water. We got to limit additional intake to prevent worsening hyponatremia. Number three, we're monitoring that serum sodium and that neurostatus really closely. 
sodium below 125, like we had immediate intervention. We got to give them that sodium back. So we used hypertonic saline, that 3% sodium chloride, so that we can give them more saline, give them more sodium, so that we don't have further drops and more fluid shifting. We have to do it slowly, though. Remember, if we give that sodium back too fast, we can cause further damage. So sodium back, that's going to balance things out. So that being said, let's circle on back to the original question and see if you guys can answer and know why. You are a nurse caring for a client with SIADH. They have a sodium level of 122, which of the following is your priority nursing action? A was to administer a loop diuretic as prescribed. B to monitor intake and output every shift. C to restrict oral fluids to one liter per day and D to implement seizure precautions. What do you think is that immediate priority nursing action? Say it out loud with me. I hope you've all got it. It is D, implementing those seizure precautions. We know sodium, especially below 120, but 122, we have got severe hyponatremia. Sodium is critical for nerve and brain function, and when that sodium drops to dangerously low levels, the brain swells. That's why our client had confusion. That's why she wasn't totally sure, was forgetting, was irritable. And if it had progressed, that brain could swell. She could have seizures. She could go into a coma. So when I see low sodium, priority is seizure precautions. Prevention, safety, those are going to be your priority actions. So your other options here, we had A, administer a loop diuretic. Now, we didn't go over this. In our case, the loop diuretic wasn't needed. The SIADH resolved quickly. But it is an option as a broader treatment plan to promote free water excretion. By administering that, it's not your immediate priority. In this moment, we have got a neuro danger complication situation, right? We have got to give that sodium, get them on seizure precautions, and balance things out. We have to make sure they are safe from complications, the seizures namely, before we are administering a loop diuretic. Now, monitor intake and output every shift. Some of you might have chosen this because it is a correct action to monitor eyes and O's, but every shift is not enough. Remember, in my case, I was monitoring eyes and O's every hour. We've got critical levels. So safety intervention number one, eyes and O's, we're going to watch way more closely than just every shift. And lastly, C, restricting oral fluids to one liter per day. Again, if you chose this one, you were probably thinking, yeah, SIADH, too many letters, too much water, their fluid overloaded, restrict their fluids. And for sure, no doubt, fluid restriction is a part of managing SIADH. But again, this is a treatment measure, not an immediate protective priority. We've got a critically low sodium. We need to think, what can I do to keep this client safe? And seizure precautions is the answer here. That is really your key takeaway of the episode. In SIADH, we have too many letters and too much water. It dilutes our sodium down to critically low levels, and we have to think brain safety. Seizures are a real immediate risk, and your role as the nurse is to act quickly to protect the client. So that means seizure precautions first. All right, future nurses, that is a wrap. If you found this pod helpful, I'd love to continue supporting your nursing journey through nursing school, the NCLEX, continuing ed, and beyond. Archer Nursing has you covered with on-demand video lectures, high-yield question banks, live case study reviews, and so, so much more. We want to help you master tough concepts and make it fun. So join us over at archerreview.com. Follow us on socials at Archer Nursing for more free nursing tips and study resources. Thanks for tuning in to Pulse Check with Archer Nursing. I'm Dr. Morgan Taylor, and I'll see you back next time.